Welcome to the Global Business Talk Show. As usual, we bring you the best. We bring you the expert on several fields so the community could learn more and so we could advance. Today, I'm bringing you a very beautiful young lady from Michigan, Denver, and now in sunny Florida, none other than my very, very good friend, Miss Linda Hamburger. You will get to know her. You get to appreciate her because she holds the key to your success. Whether you have a business that you're launching, whether that whether you have a festival that you're trying to uh, ensure that you have the best marketing or PR opportunities so you could connect with the community, whether you're a student, let's have it with uh, Miss Linda Hamburger. Linda, how are you? Hi, I'm very good. I'm happy to be here. And how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Tell us, Denver, Michigan. Denver, Michigan. You went uh, to school in Denver and Michigan, and then now you're in sunny Florida. Tell us a little how you left Denver and Michigan, where it's really cold, to come down to Florida. Tell us about your journey. I like cold weather. So, <laughs> so living in Florida has always been sort of a mystery to me, but actually it was Florida, Michigan. No, no, wait. It was Michigan, Florida, Michigan, Denver. I think I got the order mixed up when you start <laughs> to move around. Um, but we moved down here in 1975 or so, and I actually went to a local school called Pinecrest Preparatory, mm -hmm. and it was a pivotal uh, education in my life. I've stayed friends with most of those people that I went to the school with. They moved on to very important positions. Mm -hmm. And I must say that they've helped me with my career as I've grown and strong friendships. That's great. I went to Denver to go downhill skiing for four years. Then I realized <laughs> I had to get more of an education. So I went to Michigan State University mm -hmm. for a master's in public relations, which was sort of unheard of back then. People yes. really didn't appreciate public relations in, in the old days as being a career. Uh, so it was advertising or marketing. And so for many years, I actually told people that I had gotten my degree in advertising rather than public relations. Mm -hmm. Very different today. Yes. And then I went to Florida Atlantic University for a master's in public administration where they paid me salary and tuition. It was the first year of the urban and regional planning department. Mm -hmm. So I had been working for the uh, Delray Beach Community Redevelopment Agency and Downtown Development Authority. And I was decided to take a class in urban and regional planning. And I was recruited by the school to then move into that role. And so there's been a lot of education in my background, a lot of people that have mentored me along the way. And it's been sort of a interesting ride, to say the least, because <laughs> most of my career has been in uh, nonprofit and entertainment production, public relations. So you get what people consider a glamorous career and they don't see the backstage stress. And, and and you are in the best in the back backstage. Miss Hamburger, wait, did you live in New York? Never New York. That's the Michigan wine. Oh, for some reason, I've always felt like you were a New Yorker. There's uh, there's a hamburger clan from New York, mm -hmm. and we're the hamburger clan from Michigan. And so <laughs> people don't realize that the long vowels are Midwestern long vowels. And oh, I'll tell you, if people want to get uh, get mad at me, they always tell me to go back to New York where I'm from. <laughs> And I'm always complimented. I think, wow, they consider me big city just like you do. I think that's always a compliment that people consider that I came from a big city rather than a small town background. Wow, wow. Can, can you tell us a difference? Because uh, earlier you spoke about marketing, public relations, and advertising. How would somebody who knows nothing about any of those but would like to be out there, how would they see the difference? Well, that's a very good question. Advertising is paid placements. So you have control over what people see. You're buying space and time in something and you have time to produce it and then pick where you're going to have people see it, how they're going to see it. And, uh, and such as that, you have a lot more control. Marketing is the bigger picture of 
marketing is the bigger picture of promoting businesses on all different levels, price, product, place, promotion. You can have different specializations within marketing. Somebody might specialize in logistics. Another person might specialize in finance. Somebody else like myself specializes in promoting companies and events. Public relations is mistakenly referred to as free advertising, but there's really nothing free about it. Uh, you lose control over the message, but you put the message out there and you hope that the media and the public and the bloggers will pick up on it. So you're not taping it in advance. You're not creating uh, an ad that you have control over the look. You're creating a press release and you're putting the word out there that you're having an announcement of some sort, whether it's somebody got an award or somebody has an event coming up or there is promotions going on and major announcements and you're going to develop a press release which is really something that a lay person can do i don't recommend it but a press release is basically a three paragraph document that makes the announcement on the top tell a little bit more about your event or announcement in your second paragraph and in your third paragraph always put what your boilerplate is always remember to tell people how to contact your business and the phone number, the email, the website. You'd be surprised how many people forget to put off the closing on their press release. Once the press release is done, I'm gonna tell you a secret hint, okay? So go over to PR Log, it's free, and issue your press release using PR Log. A lay person can work their way through it. Now, if you wanna hire a public relations person, expect to spend a good amount of money, um, and that's for a different conversation. <laughs> I like the way you say that is it for a different conversation. But uh, if I'm if I'm launching a product, if I'm announcing that I'm running for office, if I'm opening my shop where I'm a website designer, do I need all three of them? Uh, or would you recommend that we, we we use all three of them? Or could I say, well, I'm gonna send a press a press release and forget the marketing and the advertising. I don't have the money for it and I don't have the time for it. Well, everything is budget. So it depends is the answer. If you don't have a large budget, these days I suggest looking into Google ads uh, as probably a first line option depending on what it is that you're going to be doing. But for those announcements that you're describing, uh, then your budget would go into developing your press release and making sure that it gets distributed out there, which is not an easy thing. You have to use uh, viral marketing, as they say. You have to engage your friends, your network, all the people that you know, and helping you to distribute it to their networks. So the further you can advance that uh, line of communication, the further you will be forward in getting the word out about these uh, particular opportunities. I want to talk to you about Delray because you mentioned Delray earlier about, um, you know, I would say the startup of the community. Now, I know Delray is upcoming now where we have uh, the Arts Garage, we have uh, food, we have a lot of uh, cultural activities there. But back in the time that you were working in Delray, uh, what, what were you doing since I don't think you were doing PR? because Delray used to be a dead town, almost a ghost town. Delray was a sleepy town. Oh, sleepy, okay. <laughs> uh, it, it was pretty wonderful back in the day. And I was the first employee of the Urban and Redevelopment Agency back then. Uh, what they would do is they would close Delray Beach up for the summer. There wouldn't be a summertime Delray Beach. So the stores would close, people would go on vacation. Um, it was very stratified in the African-American community, um, Jamaicans, Haitians from your white community. They had very different lives and different activities that they took part in then. Mm -hmm. And when the urban and regional development community came along and the downtown development authority came along, they wanted to make it a more vibrant community where everybody felt that they could enjoy each other's uh, cultures and have a lot more, um, a lot more choices of things to do within the community. So that was part of the role in getting the downtown development agency and the urban and regional development authority working. Um, 
But I can tell you some stories back in the day. It wasn't unusual that we had an open bar and people were smoking cigarettes. So I don't want to give away my age, but it was a very different time. But we're talking what year now? Uh, in the 80s? Um, yeah, that would have been in the early 80s. So, well, no, I lied. That would have been in the late 80s, 89. 89, okay. But the point that I was trying to make is that this organization was probably planning what we're having now as a boom. Because if they already is as beautiful, it didn't happen overnight. So, my point is that those things are being planned 20, maybe 30 years in advance in order for us to have, uh, I don't know, a nice Delray. They had a wonderful fella. He was on the beat back then, Jeff Perlman, and he was the reporter for the Monday, Friday papers. And so he got to know the community in depth and eventually he became mayor. And then eventually under his tutelage and all the people that worked there, it became one of the all American cities. So there was just um, a whole lot of fun seeing how it uh, grew and developed into something that you see today from a town that used to close for the summers. The, um, the Chamber of Commerce, the folks mm -hmm. would head over to Naples and they would deliberately go over there and try to recruit stores from the West Coast and try to get kind of that West Coast vibe into our East Coast area. Mm. Mm. West Coast vibe, I like that. The West Coast <laughs> vibe into the East Coast area. You, you've done several things. Um, I met you through Chamber's event and earlier when you were talking uh, about the Chamber, you were talking about the Delray Chamber, which is very uh, big still in Delray and they control a lot of activities. Um, you've done festival. Tell me, um, through your journey, what is it that you enjoy doing the most? Because I'm going to talk later on about other things that I know that you do. There's a lot to enjoy about what I do, but it's not just that I promote the events. I get to go to the events. And so that's the part I enjoy the most. I've met plenty of celebrities. I've enjoyed lots of entertainment, um, you know, had lots of opportunities to dress up and meet VIPs. So quite honestly, when I started out in public relations, I just could not believe I had a job where I could was paid to go hit the bar and eat the free food. Um, <laughs> As I got older, of course, and matured more into the job, I realized it wasn't just about going to the bar and eating the free food. And I've developed many wonderful contacts through the years, including you at the Lauder Hill Regional Chamber of Commerce events. Yes. And one of the events that, that I personally enjoyed so very much that I know that you spearhead, and it was a very huge project. It was the Chinese Festival. Can you tell us a little about that? Oh, yes, the Chinese Lantern Festival. There was two of them. One was in Palm Beach County and one was in Broward County. And each festival lasted for six weeks. So it was the longest festival that both counties had ever hosted in their uh, history, actually. And it took a tremendous amount of logistics to put this event together. It was over at the, was it the Lauder Hill Regional Park? Can you help me remember yes. the exact name of the venue? Yes, that, that is the Lauder Hill Regional Park. And, and it was just so awesome. Uh, I've, I've, I've not, I have not known you for 20 or 30 years, but knowing that you were, and, and well, I would say in the back of everything that was happening from the project coming to life to the history, the culture. Um, I remember seeing those lanterns on the lake. It was awesome. There was tremendous community support for that particular event. So we had a wonderful team that helped support us from Commissioner Holness's office. We had people from the Convention and Visitors Bureau, CVB. We had the Lauder Hill Regional Chamber of Commerce team helping us put this together. And oh, Lord knows, I probably left some other people out, but we had tremendous community support. Uh, we were given special prices on things like the billboards and some of the advertisement placements. And so there was a lot of coming together and certainly I like to take the credit, but I can't take all the credit. Something like that required graphic designers, people to work on the website. 
doing press releases. But then I wore many hats and I remember even having to order up uh, some bridges to go across the lake there at the park. Uh, So there were some interesting things that I never thought in my career I would be tasked with doing, uh, even determining how to get the ticket sales going and what would be the best platform for that. So a lot of exciting aspects to that particular event. And the other, um, I would say, the other field where I feel very comfortable finding you is uh, education. Pardon me, I didn't, I didn't hear that. I said the other field that I enjoy watching you evolve in is education. So you also a, an adjunct teacher, and, and I love being in your class, and I love seeing you teach because of the way that you present uh, the subjects uh, to the, the to the students. So you teach marketing at, at at a local university. Do you enjoy teaching? Yes, one of my most satisfying um, things in my career is having become an adjunct marketing professor. Mm -hmm. Presently, I'm at Nova Southeast University, and I teach different courses in marketing, such as sales, introduction to marketing, consumer behavior. Working with young people is a real passion of mine, and helping to mentor them along, having unbelievable guest speakers come in for the young people. Um, It's something that I'll tell you the truth. There was a point in my career where I felt some frustration. I felt that I'd hit that glass ceiling. I don't know if they use the expression, the glass ceiling as much anymore, but I felt that I hit that plateau and I was frustrated. And I said to myself, there must be something else I can do with my two master's degrees. And so I saw an ad back then in the newspaper. Yeah, we had newspapers. And I saw an ad that it was uh, for a teacher at a local college. And I went over there and interviewed just like I would for a job. And the first day I got up in front of a classroom of students, I thought I was going to be sick. (laughs) (laughs) And now, of course, I just love it. Um, So it's a wonderful thing. So that sort of led to my not having a traditional career path, not having just one job that I do, but having um, this opportunity to do both on-call public relations, serving as an adjunct professor of marketing. And I have a third sideline, if you want to call it that, on-call resumes, where I help people with their careers, building their resumes and how to get, you know, restarted or started in the job market. And I think it, it's wonderful because one of the things that I realized when you're teaching your classes in marketing is that you, you're you not only targeting only one specific class of people. It's not that all your students are studying marketing or they want to be marketers. They're from different backgrounds. They are, they are lawyers. And I think not only you teach them how to uh, deal with the marketing uh a field of public relations, I would say in general, but you help them as well because having a resume, I think it's very important. Wouldn't you say? I, I, I hear sometimes people talk about, "Oh, I'm only going to update my resume when I when I'm looking for a job." Should people update their resume or have a resume only if they need a job? Having a resume is essential, but even more essential and growing is the LinkedIn profile. And there's ways to use LinkedIn far beyond it just being a passive platform. You Mm -hmm. can even do a recording of your voice, not just a recording of your name to help people with the pronunciation, but you can even take that recording option that they have on LinkedIn and make a short promotional statement about yourself. For example, in my case, it would be I'm Linda Hamburger, a public relations professional and adjunct professor of marketing at Nova Southeast University. You want to come up with a very short, tight sentence that says who you are, what is your career, and brand yourself, okay? Give yourself an identity and use LinkedIn to also start building your network and to build your resume if you don't have one. It walks you through the steps. And from that, you can take a lot of that and build your resume. But definitely always have a current resume available because otherwise you can end up spending hundreds and some people have even spent over a thousand dollars on career coaches and getting their resumes built up but if you keep it current you're going to avoid having any major cost when it comes time to start looking around for other opportunities 
and opportunities there are. Would you say a, a college student, uh, a low class executive should have a resume and a CEO should have a biography? Is, is there a difference? Is there a preference? What would you recommend? With a higher level CEO, um, I've been putting career statements at the top and still using a traditional resume format following that. So a higher level executive is going to have a two page resume. Uh, and, and somebody coming out of school is going to have a one page resume. But even if you're just coming out of school, then you want your statement to be very clear about what it is that you hope to, uh, not that you're looking for work, but to make it clear that you're very anxious to get a job in public relations, for example, or in healthcare. And also on your resume, you should be involved with at least one group or organization. One of the biggest weaknesses I see almost consistently on resumes that I handle is people when they're in their jobs and they say they're too busy, they say they don't have the money, they're missing out on those networking opportunities that should always be a part of somebody's life, whether you're joining the Haitian American Chamber of Commerce um, or the Lauder Hill Regional Chamber of Commerce or whatever organization relates to your field of practice, that is something that should always be on there. Um, otherwise, we can all do some volunteer work, whether it's for our churches or our community centers and have that as something that adds to our resume. At closing and opening your resume are the two most essential parts of a resume. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. I, f I found that a lot of people are not doing community service or community work. It seems like they are just machine. They just go to work and they had gone to school and then that's it. And this is this is their life. And I think it 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 tells the, the, the interviewers that maybe you don't have any more inspiration or aspiration. It's just like you've done. I want my work and this is what I study and then that's, that's all there is. Do not bother me with anything else. But I also seen resumes of five pages. What would you say to somebody who have a five page resume? Never, ever have <laughs> a five page resume. Have a two page resume and then have an addendum um, if you really need to list all your achievements, then have an addendum page, but you really should keep that resume to two pages. I have somebody right now that I'm personally having some challenges with because she's had a very, very high level political career. She's worked in many realms of politics and she's had tremendous achievements in all those positions. And so it's very difficult to say to her, take that background and build it into just two pages. That is something even I, after all these years of doing resumes and struggling with how to take that background. And it might be one of the few times that I say, okay, you can go over to three pages. Uh, but you know, she should be looking for a six figure level salary if that's the case. Otherwise, you know, I would say you have to cut that down. You have to abbreviate it somehow. But, wouldn't that be the case where maybe she needs a biography, something that if she was to write a book that she'll be able to put in the, in the back of the book? Exactly. But your biography should just be uh, not necessarily for a book, but you should try to see what you can say within just a single paragraph. Um, what it is that you do, you have to no matter what I just went to, um, is it career source? Mm -hmm. in Palm Beach. Career, career source in Palm Beach. I believe they have one in Broward County right. and they're pretty adamant, you know, come up with your elevator pitch, come up with the shortest way that you can of branding yourself, no matter what level of your career you are at, just synthesize that down and they have career coaches over there. There's no charge to use these services and they have career coaches that will work you through how you can synthesize 30 years, 20 years of experience, even 10 years, and how you can synthesize it and just make the most of it. A lot of times we can say, uh, put your LinkedIn uh, HTTPL on there and tell people to go there if they want a fuller synthesis of your background and skills. Your resume is supposed to get their interest, but not to necessarily tell your entire life story. 
<laughs> Indeed. And, and, and the reason why I enjoy the biography is because it kind of tells you uh, who I am, where I stand, what I aspire to do, and what I enjoy to do. So if you were to take four sentences and I was able to combine them, it would have been perfect. Miss Hamburgers, I will tell you that your students, they love you. <laughs> They're always raving about your teaching uh, skills, the approaches that you, you, you take, and, and how you help them think outside of the box, I would say. Yes, it's um, like I said, it's a lot of fun to work with the young people because I learn from them as well. So you just don't let on. <laughs> and if you don't know the answer and you're in front of a classroom of 20 to 30 students, you go, well... What do you think the answer is to that? <laughs> Somebody sure will come up with it. Um, but besides the student, I know that you have your own baby. That is the South Florida Public Relations Network. Tell us about that. There's over a thousand people that are part of the South Florida Public Relations Network. And it was something that I started even before Facebook using a Yahoo blog. And I was experimenting around with it and we would have events and things like that. And it was very unique to the area. And uh, it still runs today, but more of as a passive platform on Facebook. Uh, so it's a nice group to be uh, involved with if you are in marketing, public relations, a little bit advertising, videographers join it. Uh, and it's just a nice place to network for the Tri-County area without having to go to events if you can't make those events. It helps you know what events are coming up within public relations. And, uh, and it's been a tremendous way for me to stay networked within my own community. And I would say also that the It, it allows you to connect with people, whether from New York or other states where they have a lot of things happening. What would you say is the biggest celebrity that you met and enjoy meeting? Oh, there, honestly, there's been so many. Um, when you say enjoyed meeting, well, I think Patsy from Happy Days. Uh, <laughs> Anson Williams. And um, we just had a lot of fun. We went down to an event over there on South Beach, and we did some taping with Deco Drive. And he was just a very fun individual to work with at that time. Uh, is Happy Day still on the reruns on the air? I believe so. Political figures? Political figures. Um, That's a tough one because I don't know that I should disclose. <laughs> don't disclose that. Um, Entertainment-wise, in terms of uh, dancers, artists, and uh, singers. Well, that's through you. When I go to, uh, what's the monthly events that you have in Delray Beach? The, la the, the, rec the most recent event that we had, and I think I still have a picture of uh, you guys, was uh, the jazz with uh, Jean-Charles Avoine, who's from New York. Exactly. I mean, that was just so much fun. And then didn't we have the uh, prime minister from, was it the... The prime retired? minister, Gérard Latortu, was there as well. Yes. Oh, well, I guess that would be a good political figure for you. Yes, it was. During COVID, uh, Miss Linda, how was the life of the people in PR and marketing? What were they able to do? Was he, were they as affected as the people who have a nine to five job who are not as creative as your bunch? More so um, in my area of public relations. In promoting live events, uh, the first day of COVID, I knew that my career was going to be on a hiatus, and it was, and I expected as much. So I made more of an effort to try to make money off of the on-call resumes, which I consider more of a sideline than my mm -hmm. primary position. And of course, we were teaching, and I had to quickly adjust to teaching using Zoom with my students. So that was actually quite a challenge. But the public relations came to a screeching halt. And now I've segued into doing public relations for a medical practice, um, which I struggled with as well, because I'm not used to doing such a traditional type of writing as what's required in promoting a medical practice. 
but I'm getting adjusting my writing and you realize that public relations is fun no matter which year you go into. You do have to get that tone of voice mm -hmm. is what I would call it um, for what it is that you're promoting at that time. Does that help? Um, I had plenty of PR people who, yeah, a lot of them, their careers did go a little bit on hiatus uh, because there wasn't events to promote or they shifted to doing more social media, uh, blogging and getting the word out that way. Mm -hmm. Do you have any event coming up through the uh, uh, to the network, the South Florida Public Relations Network? That uh, I, I think that part of the network is that people could join. They could they could stay and and join the the network. South Florida Public Relations Network was more of a volunteer. You don't have to pay money, and that was it's what its precedent was back when it started up. Um, and it was an umbrella for people who wanted to be involved, whether they were in the Public Relations Society of America, the American Marketing Association, the Advertising Federation, Women in Communications. So it was sort of just providing a, uh, a meeting place for all these different types of organizations without superseding them. So if somebody really wants to get involved in public relations, I'm going to steer them to the Public Relations Society of America, PRSA is the uh, acronym for it. Um, there's also the Gold Coast Public Relations Council, GCPRC, I believe, that's up in Boca Raton. And so if somebody wants to get out and get to professional events, I'm gonna tell them also, look at the American Marketing Association. Mine has really segued, like I said, more into a uh, Facebook group than going out and having actual events of its own. Okay, okay. Well, Ms. Hamburger, you need to tell us what uh, what would be your word of advice for uh, professional business owners, uh, job seekers. And I want to make a disclaimer for you because uh, this show will be aired on uh, the WAVS and as well as other network uh, that are probably mostly Caribbean. The disclaimer is that as you contact Ms. Hamburger, for her services because she writes perfect resumes. She's not uh, in the business of looking for the job for you as well. Should I say that? That's correct. I'm not a job placement person. Um, I have a little bit of a list here. Manpower USA is at a career source and they sometimes go right into there. There's David Wood. Um, there's Manpower I mentioned. Uh, Randstad, Boca Raton, Kelly Education. If you're an educator, a lot of people don't realize that Kelly has an arm of it which just helps to place educators. Um, let's see, Agilon is a good placement service. There's many of them. Yes. And people don't realize, they think of these organizations uh, of just doing lower level jobs, but no, these temp and temp to perm agencies have very good opportunities for many people. Um, as well. Another thing that I would say, if you're going to try to promote your own small business or even a large business, be careful how you spend that money. If you want to put your money into LinkedIn ads and Facebook ads and Google ads, you may as well be putting your money into a slot machine in Las Vegas. So be very careful that you do small sums initially with each one of those and make sure you know how to end those ads with those um, engines because otherwise you could find yourself being thousands of dollars in debt very quickly. So there's always a word of caution when you start to do those types of things. Start out with just $5 here, $5 there. Go with the minimum budget and then see which ones get the hits. If you get two or three hits, but you're using a small budget, that's still a good sign that then you could up your budget there. Because even if you're doing a small budget, you should feel like you're getting noticed to a certain extent. Does that make sense to you, what I'm saying? That makes perfect, perfect sense. Because here at the Global Business Talk Show, we often tell people, you could do nothing. You could learn how to do it. And as you say, you if you're learning how to do it, you do it with caution. Or you could pay somebody who could do it for you. But that person will also have to give you some guarantees as well. So I think it's, it's a perfect word of advice for people who are going into the business. Now, as far as the resume, your company on... on um, on 
call PR will help them with the resumes. And I'm going to give out the, your phone number, which is 561-372-9691. 561-372-9691. You call Miss Hamburger, she'll <laughs> talk to you about getting your resume done, of course, for, for, for a fee. I know that she is a wonderful lady, and then she'll mention about all those uh, organizations that can help you get a job, but she herself is not going to be the one looking to place you uh, with, with your job-seeking uh, uh, problem. <laughs> Am I right? Exactly. I do a lot of formatting for resumes. People do their resumes and then they realize they don't look their best. So mm -hmm. even if they have tremendous content and they have a background that can just, you're like, wow, I can't believe this person and what a great background they are, but they're hiding it and they're not presenting it in the best look possible. So one of the things that I do is also help format the resumes to make sure that they look their best possible, like putting on your finest dress or your best suit. That's what you want for your resume. Um, and you want to make sure that you're highlighting the right bullet points. That's very important because people will take only a few moments to glance at what you're doing. Same thing with a press release. You want to make sure that you're highlighting the most important bullet points and not trying to put everything into the document. Uh, if you're going to, by the way, if you're going to look into hiring a public relations person, like I said, uh, an agency will charge a minimum of 1000. It's not uncommon for them to charge $2,500 a month. So people sometimes go in and they're sticker shock when they look to hire a PR agency. And one thing about the South Florida Public Relations Network is if people get a hold of me, I can usually put a shout out. Is there somebody who is an independent public relations person who can help that client for less money? You follow what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. the network is made up of individuals, not as much agencies. And so there's a lot of freelance people out there who might be more affordable. Perfect, perfect. Miss Hamburger, I don't know how to thank you. I will <laughs> tell my audience that uh, she is somebody who loves education. Uh, she does what she preaches. Uh, we did not get into that, but when she said that you need to be um, helping or volunteering in, uh, with an organization, back in the days you volunteer for the National Alliance on Mental, uh, on Mental Illness in Broward County to help you know, remove the stigma for mental illness and people having a quality of life. So she does, she breathes it, she does it. She makes perfect resume. She's a guru when it comes to public relationships. She helps with marketing. You've heard her, festivals, uh, celebrities, entertainment. Um, we'll forget about the political people. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, and then she enjoy her students at the at the college where she where she teaches. Uh, you are awesome, and 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 I love you very 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 much. And I'm and I'm honored to be uh, counted among your friends. And same here for you. <laughs> it's a wonderful warm friendship that we've developed through the years. Yes. And I have a lot of admiration going your direction as well. And I was thrilled to be on your show. So yes. hopefully I've given some good, helpful tips and advice that people can take a look at. Um, again, if you want to win your own public relations, uh, my helpful hint was PR log. I give you a wink. <laughs> <laughs> they know what that means. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that you know that um, a lot of other folks are not familiar with that tool, but it's something you should visit as soon as we log off this show if you want to start promoting yourself using public relations techniques. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on a Global Business Talk Show. We hope to have you again soon, and we hope to be able to share bread, uh, I don't know, soon when the pandemic is over. <laughs> okay, very good. Very good. Thanks for having me. All Thank right. Bye-bye.